Hello everyone. Today I'm going to answer a question that we here at Total Lab get very frequently, which is which background method removal is best? So I'm going to run through the background removal options we've got within our Fretix 1D software, how they work, and how you would decide which is the best background removal technique for your data. So I've taken you through here to the background removal section of Fretix 1D, where we make the decisions and change the settings, which is going to decide what we determine as background and what we want to remove. Now, when I'm referring to background, I mean these areas within the image between our obvious areas of intensity, our bands in this instance, where it's it's light gray. So there is a, a, a signal within the image there, but it's not one we wish to measure. We want to remove it from our results. Now, an issue with applying background removal at the same value across the length of our lane is you can see the background level changes along the length of our lane. This is very common. It's very unusual to have an image where all background is the same value and you can just subtract it. You can see here this area would be considered background and it relates to this grey area within our image here where we don't have any areas of obvious signal. You can see it here. However, if we applied a background removal method at an intensity of say 81, so we removed all of the values below 81 from our analysis, we would actually be losing these two small peaks here, which might be of interest to the researcher, but we'd also still be including these areas here, which again are slightly darker gray areas of background within our image. So what we need is a background removal technique that is adaptive to some degree. It can adapt to the changing background within our image, but without losing the sensitivity for the bands that we have and for that this is the reason why we recommend using rolling ball now rolling ball is actually an algorithm that, that dynamically adjusts the background removal technique along the length of the lane and it does this by theoretically rolling a ball underneath the profile of a lane of a fixed size and the setting changes the fixed size as a percentage of lane length of that ball and the ball, the smaller you make the ball, the further it will fall into your peaks. So imagine it rolling up. And the larger you make your ball, the, the, the fewer peaks it can fall into or the larger the peak would need to be for it to fall into it. So this gives it a certain level of adaptability to the changing background within your lane. Now, all of the background removal techniques within Fretics 1D, you can kind of preview before you make a decision and as you change the settings, for that background removal technique. So as you can see before, as I change the radius of the ball in the rolling ball background algorithm, you can see it changes what is going to be removed from my, from my lane profile and what is going to be counted as a background. You can turn this off to see what your peaks would look like just with the current settings. But so it's this dark blue area here is what will be removed from all of my intensity measurements. So that's how the rolling ball method works. And in most cases, we would suggest rolling ball is the method you want to use, again, because it adapts to changing levels of background as you move across along your lane profile. There's a certain level of flexibility built into it. Now, if you don't want to use the background, uh, you don't want to use the rolling ball background subtraction method, we have the rubber band method, which takes kind of, which just draws a, a straight line between the start and end point of a profile but as you can see this hasn't accounted for quite a lot of the background which is in this image so it's not as flexible or as adaptable as the rolling ball technique we've got the ability to set the background of the lane as a, as a constant value so as i was saying before if we wanted to pop it at 80 to try and focus on this area of background we would actually lose all of this data at the top end of our lane, which might be something that, that we want, that we're interested in measuring. So it's a very hard and, and rigorous approach to removing background. And it would still include all of these background, all of these measurements here, which again are just darker gray images, but not signal, Im signal of the image within our lane. So again, that's an, a very arbitrary, using a, a constant fixed value to remove your background is a very arbitrary way of doing it. We've got the ability to select the, the, the profile minimum value as the background removal method, which literally just takes the lowest point of the lane, not always the starting point of the lane, 
but whatever the lowest value is along the lane length, it would set the background there. And then we've got the ability to use an image rectangle. So when you click on image rectangle, you will be given a purple adjustable box here on your image. And you would size this purple box to kind of how large you want your rectangle to be. And you would place it along the area that you want to represent your background. So if you had, say, an unused lane within your gel, you could place this over the lane and take that as background and then subtract that from all your other lanes. Or you could use a, a very small section of the the gel where there's definitely not any signal or the block where there's not any signal and you can see as you move this around you get a dynamic update of what that result is going to look like if you apply this method with these settings. So the question of what is the best background removal method to use it's subjective. We would say in most instances a good rolling ball setting is, is what you would need and would be preferable. However, you do get the option to play with all of the different background removal techniques and see what that is going to do to your data, what your lane profile is going to look like, what your bands are going to look like if you do go ahead with those settings. So you do have a lot of visibility about how your data is going to look with each of your background removal techniques. But what you're looking for is to remove all the areas of, of no signal here so you can just focus on the areas where you definitely do have signal within your experiment. Thanks for listening. I hope this clears up some questions that people may have around background removal and the difference in background removal techniques and how to choose the correct background removal technique for you and your data. If you'd like to have a trial of Foretics 1D to see how it works within your lab with your data, please check out the links in the description below.